Agricultural Bank of Namibia's Agri-Advisory Services Division offers training to farmers and bank clients in various farming enterprises in all 14 regions of Namibia through face-to-face -face sessions. The AgriLearn online platform will share production content on various agriculture farming enterprises to build the knowledge of farmers from all walks of life. Join us as we embark on this virtual journey towards sustainable farming as we zoom into the basics of farm infrastructure. Good day, farmers. I am John Fenter. I'm a livestock mentor from Agri Advisory Service Division AgriBank. And I want to talk to you today about the distribution of water on your farm and the storages of water on your farm. I want to talk today about, for you about water dams, about water troughs, pipelines, and float valves in water tanks. With, this, with the distribution of water, everything starts here at the bottle. So you need a water pump to get the water from out the bottle and pump it to your water dam or to your water tank. And from the water dam, therefore you need a pipeline to take the water to your water trough so your animals can drink water. But I can also I can take the water directly from the bottle up on the pipeline to a water post and <clears throat> pumping the water but with a high pressure water pump. So when I'm looking at pipelines, you get two different types of pipes that you can use on the pipeline. The one is the black polydentic uh, PVC pipe, the other one is the PVC pipe. The PVC pipe is coming in six meters and you have to glue it together. And you have to bury it below the ground because the PVC pipe is not ultraviolet resistant and they will be damaged from the sunlight. When you look at the black <coughs> polythene pipe, you have also can, bear, can uh, should bury it at least 30 centimeters below the ground, but sometimes you got problems with your mouse moles, you come and uh, eat them, or maybe your ant bear, or maybe your porcupine will come and damage your pipeline. You can also put on the, polyt the, the black uh, pipe on your fencing, but <coughs> there's only where there's too much rocks and you can't dig a hole in the ground or maybe put, a, put the pipe inside the ground. But when you put a pipe on the fencing, it becomes very, very hot and you have to protect it from frost and also you have to protect it from sun. So to protect it from, from the sun, you can paint, it, can, can paint it with industrial aluminium paint so the uh, uh, a paint will reflect the sunlight from the pipe and the water will cool off inside your, inside your water. When you're going from, water, from your bottle, normally you're pumping water first for your domestic use. And that's why you're pumping water inside your water tank and the water from the water tank is going on a pipeline to your homestead where you can use the water for the domestic use. If you get surplus water, then you go in this water, is going for your other, other farming activities. So the water is going then, therefore, otherwise, it's going also to your water trough and to get your animals water. <clears throat> also, you're going up first in the water tank and you make an overflow, the overflow is going in your water dam. <clears throat> so in from the water dam, the pipeline is going to the water trough. So when I look at, I also can take the water here on the pipeline <coughs> to other post. <coughs> but then you need your engine or maybe some pump that can pump the water. And to the other side, like this one, is the, the tank is standing up front. <coughs> your water can go up in the tank and you put a float valve <coughs> at the other side of the dam. <coughs> this is the, how the float valve is, 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 uh, float valve is looked like. And so you put the other side of the dam and when the dam is fully the other side, then the float valves will close and there will no water will uh, pump the other side and the water only will pump here at your homestead and the overflow will go in the dam close to, the, to your home. So also when you're going on a, a pipeline on a long distance, <coughs> you need a non-return valve or a one-way valve. <coughs> So this is the water is going from the bottle, it's going on your pipeline. But it prevented that the water is coming back and going back inside your bottle. So your pipeline should become never become running dry when you pumping water in a pipeline or maybe in a free flow in a pipeline. When the pipeline is coming uh, empty and running dry, 
<laughs> then the air locks will form inside your pipe. And this means when you start uh, pumping water, the water will not pumping through and your pipe will burst. So that's why it's important that you should put on a one-way a, a, a valve to make sure that the water can't return back inside in your bottle. And also that important is when you go in here on a pipeline, you, if you're pumping with an, a power rate, then an unequal evil, even flow is coming from the, 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 the power rate and pumping inside your, your pipe, and that makes that your pipe will burst. Therefore, you need an air vessel here close to your bottle, and the air vessel is only is air inside it, and not water inside it. And that makes that your, the, the, the air that is inside in the pipe, and the unequal, uneven uh, flow <coughs> will uh, get uh, to an even flow when they're going through the air vessel. If you're also going on the pipeline on the far way, and your topical fear is up and down, and then you need an air valve. <coughs> so this is the air valve that you need inside your pipeline, and always on the highest points of your pipeline, you put on the air valve. Now the best air valve you can put on is an open standing pipe, <coughs> but it should high enough, it should be high enough to the highest point, the water not will spilling over there. <clears throat> Otherwise, we have to put on the air valve, but the problem with the air valve is we have to look at and test it because the insects make the nest inside it and it blocked it, or also the scale inside it will block it. And this is also about the scale, is when your uh, pipeline is running dry on a, on a regular base, <clears throat> then the scale is formed inside your pipe. And when the pipe is uh, becoming dry, then the scale will become uh, becoming loose inside the pipe and they will block your pipe. And therefore the water can't go through your pipe. And then you have to be struggling to open the pipe. And then you have on every meter, 100 meters, you have to open the pipe and see where the, the, the problem is and to open the pipeline. So if I look at my water dam, you should make sure that your water dam is big enough to hold at least 10 to 14 days water for your animals. So if they come a breakdown to your bottle, then it gives you enough time to make the maintenance and repair, and repair the, the, the bottle, and there's enough water inside in your water dam. And mostly, uh, most of the people is only leaving a little bit of water inside the dam. But it's very, very important that your dam should be always full of water and not half of water of, 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 of half empty of water. Because coming to a problem with your bottle, then you've got big problems and you have to take your animals to another farm or another place. And also note, don't let water spilling over your water dam. If water is around your water dam, then it's becoming soft around the dam and the foundation of them, they were sucking down and they will burst and crack. And there come a lot, lot of leakage coming through in the dam. And also inside or below your, your water on the floor, they said the water was going down and some of the ant bears were going in digging there and looking for some insects inside it and also the floor was sucking down. When you also with your, with your water dam, you have to look at all your trees around, about 50 meters around the water dam. You have to cut it off, you take it away because the roots were coming down in, in the dam, below the dam and they lift up the floor. And the floor will crack and also a lot of water is going out there. So it's very important to make sure that no leakage is around your water dam. So when you want to replace the water dam with only with water tanks, then you have to make sure that this water dam take at least 120,000 liters of water, plus minus 80, 120 liters water. So if you replace it, you should put up enough water tanks in the same, the equal, than the water that was in the dam. So for this dam, you need eight to 10 water tanks of 10,000 liters. And when you put a water, a plastic water tank on a stand by standing up, then you should make sure that the base of the platform should be flat with no spaces between. If there's spaces between, then the water tank will sucking inside there and it will be damaged and will not last long. But when you have an irrigated iron water tank, is standing there, then you have to make a little bit of some space because the iron becoming rust. 
and then also will damage it. So when you leave the space there, the space there then the flat of, of the whole tank becoming dry and no roost and it will last very long without it there. So if I look at the water troughs, then we get two types of water troughs. You've got the long one and maybe a, a, round, a round one. But also when you design your water trough, you think about small animals like wild, wild animals, but also come and drink water, like wardrock, etc. So you should, and also your small animals, like your, your uh, small stock, your small lamp, you can easily can drink water and don't make it too high or too wide. And also you have to protect your water trough above so that the animals can't jump across the, the uh, water uh, trough. Otherwise they will damage your water trough and also they can injure themselves. So that's why you have to protect it. And also you have you've got your float valve also inside your water trough. So your water is going from the water then, going to your water trough, and there you have a tap or maybe a float valve. But normally we want to be, that there should be a float valve. <clears throat> now when you take the, the float valve, <clears throat> you've got a, a bolt here, and now you, you can adjust <clears throat> the level of the water inside your, your, your water trough. So if you also, you should not let it spilling water around your water trough. Because if there's a lot of dirt and mud around your water trough, then a lot of the diseases can come in there. It will give you food rot for your small stock. And also for your lamps, it will give you some diarrhea. So coccidiosis, it will become a very, very big problem. So when you design your, 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 your water trough, make sure that no animals can be injured. And when we're here in sandy soil, you also have a look and see that in the sandy soil, you have a footing around your water trough. So that your big animals, when they're standing on the footing, that also of all four legs, they have to stand on it. If there's no footing, you are trapping it out. And then also your foundation of your, of your water trough will crack. You're sitting down and you have a lot of leakage inside your water, around your water trough. So <clears throat> it's very important that when you look at the distribution, <clears throat> look at the pump that the water is coming out, is correct, so you connect the pump, connect with the pipeline to your water tank for domestic use. Therefore, the water is going to the water dam, the overflow in the water dam, going for pipeline to your water trough for your animal drinking water. But I also can take the water from the pipeline to the reservoir or another dam at the post, and also from this dam to another dam by using the float valve. So when you design your water plan, make sure the water dam is big enough, the water tank is big enough, your pipelines is in good condition, and when you get a free flow of pipeline, normally you, the, the pipe is being a wider diameter than the normal pipe, because, because there's no pressure in the pipe, also the scale is forming inside the pipe. So in the free flow, it's going up, but never let going on the free flow of water if the pipe is above the ground, it's going from your water reservoir directly to your water trough. Because this water becoming very, very hot inside this pipeline. And this boiling water is coming in the water trough that your animals will be drink. So make absolutely sure that when you're taking the water from the water dam and you can't uh, uh, dig in your, 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 bury your, your pipe, then you have to make sure that you make a, a small water reservoir at the other side, close to your water trough, and you make sure that the water is cooling down inside the small water tank, and therefore they go into your water trough. That's it for now. Join us next time for more valuable insights. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to avoid missing out on new content. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages for more content.